In this video, we're going to look at converting fractions to percentages. Let's start off with some non-calculated examples. I'm going to take a fraction and I'm going to choose the fraction one tenth. So we've got one in the numerator, which is the top of the fraction, and ten in the denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction. I'm going to convert this to a percentage. You might already recognize this one now as 10%. If not, what we can look to do is write an equivalent fraction. Percentage means out of 100. So if I can write this fraction as an equivalent fraction out of 100, we can quickly find the percentage. So I've got 10 in the denominator. I ask myself, what would I have to do to make that 100? And the answer is I would need to multiply it by 10. Therefore, if I'm going to multiply the denominator by 10, I need to multiply the numerator by 10. So all I'm going to get then in the numerator is 10, and in the denominator, I'm going to get 100. Remember, a percentage is out of 100, so 10 out of 100 gives me 10%. So 1 tenth is equivalent to 10%. So let's look at another one. Let's have three twentieths. I want to now write this as a percentage. We can see that 20 is a factor of 100, as is 10. I needed to multiply this one by 10 to get 100. I need to multiply this one by 5 to get 100. So if I multiply the denominator by 5, that gives me 100. If I multiply the numerator by 5, that gives me 15. So all I've done here is multiplied by 10. I've multiplied by 5 here, and that is going to give me 15 one hundredths, or if you like, 15 out of 100, which is 15%. So all of these examples we're doing are straightforward, as the denominator is a factor of 100. So it goes into 100 exactly. Let's look at another one. 7 25ths. Well, I know that 25 again goes into 100, so all I need to do is write an equivalent fraction. If I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4, I can write this now as 100 in the denominator and 28 in the numerator, which is going to give me now 28%. We must multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4 to maintain the value of that fraction. Let's do another one. 9 out of 50. Well, if I have 9 out of 50, I can see that 50 goes into 100 twice. I'm multiplying it by 2, and that's going to give me 18 over 100. 18 out of 100, which is 18%. All of these numbers now are factors of 100, 10, 20, 25, and 50. So what happens if we don't have one? Um, let's say I got in a test 8 out of 40. So my teacher handed it back, and I had 8 out of 40. We can write equivalent fractions with this. A couple of different approaches. If you want writing an equivalent fraction, we can halve both the numerator and the denominator. So if I do that, I'm going to get 4 out of 20. Or if you could spot that you could divide this now by uh, 4, we would have 2 over 10. Or we could have divided it by 8, and we would have got 1 over 5. So we can work with any of these. So if I look right here, I would have to multiply this one up by 5. I'd have to multiply this one up by 10, and I'd have to multiply this one up by 20, if I chose any particular one. You can choose any. For me, i just like to half it, because I know 20 is a factor, and then multiply it by 5. So if we look, multiply the numerator by 5, that's going to be 20 over 100. If I did this one, again, multiply the numerator, that would give me 20 and then the denominator, we've multiplied this by 10. So multiplying it by 10, that's going to give me 20 over 100. Multiplying the numerator by 20, multiplying the denominator, uh, denominator by 20, is going to give me 20 over 100, which, of course, is going to be 20%. So all I've done here is simply gone ahead 
and found some factor that goes for a factor of 100 that I can get out of this fraction. All I've looked at doing is simplifying. You can choose any on that one. Let's look at another one. Let's go for 7 out of 40. So for this one, we can't half and get a, um, a nice integer whole number value. But what I could do here is simply half this so we could write an equivalent fraction. And the equivalent fraction is going to be 3.5 over 20. I've now got my factor of 100. So all I need to do here is multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5. So as a percentage, we'd have 100. If I do 5 times by 3, that's 15. 5 times by 1 half is 2 and a half. So we'd have 17.5. 17.5 out of 100 is 17.5%. So we can do those with at a calculator. Often it's uh, slightly easier to use a calculator, and in some examples, we are going to be forced to use a calculator. So if we just look now, for example, if I got 17 out of 39 in a test, I'm looking at 39 and trying to find some way that I can make that a factor of 100, and the answer is I can't. So all I'm going to do to convert this to a percentage is simply divide the two and multiply by 100. So in a calculator, we're onto the calculator examples now. So we do 17 divided by 39. This will give us a fraction. If you want to look at the decimal, that's the decimal equivalent. And we would simply multiply the answer by 100 to get a percentage. So we've got now 43.6 to one decimal place. So I'm going to write this is going to be 43.6. So 43.6% and that's to 1 DP. When you're doing these, check and just think, is that a reasonable answer? Well, it's just slightly less than a half if we look at this. If I doubled up 17, I would get 34. 17 out of 34 would be 50%. So this looks pretty good. So if we look at another one, let's say we had 6 out of 41 in a test. All we would do is put this in the calculator and to convert it to a percentage, we would multiply by 100. So if we do that one, all I'm going to do is now 6, and I can put this in like so, 6 over 41, and we're going to multiply this by 100. So let's do that, and that will give us now on here 14.6, so that's to one decimal place. So 14.6%. And again, given to one decimal place. So all we're doing is simply finding essentially a decimal. If we're converting a decimal to a percentage, we multiply the decimal by 100. So in doing these fractions, it's given me the decimal equivalent here, and then I'm just multiplying it. Uh, we'll do one more. Let's say I got 7 out of 13 in a test, and I wanted to know what percentage it was. 7 over 13 multiplied by 100. We can see it's going to be just over 50%. So if we do that, so let's do 7 over 13, because 7 into 14 goes twice, which would be 50%. So this is going to be just over that value, and that gives us 53.8. So 53.8%, and that is to 1 DP. So two different um, skills here. Converting fractions to percentages without a calculator, we just consider that a fraction can be converted into an equivalent one. A percentage means out of 100, so we look now what we have to do to the numerator and the denominator to make this out of 100 and convert up. With the trickier ones, we need to consider strategies where we're going to divide to get a factor of 100. And then the second skill we looked at is with a calculator, and we simply divide the fraction on the calculator. That gives us a decimal, a messy decimal, and then we multiply it by 100. I've given all my answers to one decimal place. If it's in an exam, you will be given a level of accuracy to aim for.